Greetings, everyone. I'm Jeff Woolsey, a PM in the Azure Edge and Platform team, and it's a pleasure to come to you from the Windows Server Summit, where I'm going to discuss Windows Server 2022 and the latest updates. Now, Windows Server 2022 was driven by your requirements to run business-critical workloads in Azure, on-premises, and multi-cloud. I've got a lot of content, so let's get started with advanced multi-layer security. With multi-layer security, we're going to elevate the security posture, starting with the OS. That means securing hardware, firmware, and OS capabilities to help protect against threats. And that starts with Secured Core Server. A Secured Core Server is a modern device that comes with the highest level of hardware, software, and identity protection ready right out of the box. It protects boot of trust using industry standard hardware root of trust, coupled with security capabilities built into today's modern CPUs. It defends against firmware level attack by using a dynamic root of trust of measurement, DRTM, to boot up securely and minimize firmware vulnerabilities. And then Windows Defender System Guard protects, maintains, and validates system integrity. With Secured Core Server, it prevents access to unverified code. Once the CPU is brought up safely, the OS takes control. Hypervisor-enforced code integrity ensures that all code in the kernel is trustworthy and virtualization-based security, like Credential Guard, protects domain credentials at runtime. Next, let's discuss some of the great new features in the Windows Server 2022 file server. We've been discussing security, so let's start with SMB encryption. SMB encryption protects against man-in-the-middle attacks between clients and file servers. With Windows Server 2022, we added new AES-256 cryptographic suites, and we've also made SMB encryption flexible and easy to use. It can be configured per share or for the entire file server via group policy, PowerShell, or with one checkbox in Windows Admin Center. Prior to Windows Server 2022, enabling SMB encryption disabled direct data placement, making RDMA performance as slow as TCP. Now, the data is encrypted before placement, delivering better performance and lower latency with lower CPU usage. This is a win for SQL Server, Hyper-V, or users accessing files from a file server. Finally, there's the awesomeness of SMB compression. Enabling SMB compression will use less network bandwidth, lower network congestion, and take less time to copy files at the cost of slightly increased CPU usage during transfers. A common scenario we're tackling is copying virtual machines. These files are usually large and compressible. Let's show you a test we ran. In this test, we copied a 20 gigabyte virtual hard disk from a Windows 11 client to a Windows Server 2022 file server. Without SMB compression, this took 2 minutes and 43 seconds. With SMB compression, it took 28 seconds or almost six times faster and consumed significantly less network bandwidth. If you need help migrating your older Windows file servers to 2022, let me tell you about the storage migration service in 2022. The storage migration service can migrate your legacy file servers as old as Windows Server 2003, yes, I said Windows Server 2003, to Windows Server 2022. The storage migration service migrates both data and configuration. This includes IP addresses, server name, ACLs, SMB properties, disk configuration, and more. When the migration is complete, the new file server can even be renamed the same as the legacy source, so that apps with name dependencies continue to just work. Next, SMS can enable Azure File Sync, which transforms your Windows file server into a hot cache of your Azure file share. This means the hot data your organization is using is locally available, while the cold data is transparently tiered to the cloud. This means your on-premises file server is virtually bottomless. Finally, if you'd like to migrate your file server right to the cloud into Azure IaaS, that's another option as well. Next, let's discuss app modernization with Windows Server 2022. We launched containers for Windows back in 2016. Since then, we've come a long way. You needed rapid container feature support, so we delivered a rapid set of container releases with 18 months of support. This innovation occurred in the operating system, along with partnering in open source projects like Docker, Calico, Flannel, Kubernetes, of course, and many more. And the result is staggering. Now, 
your feedback has changed. It's changed from requesting a bunch of features to feedback like this. Microsoft, the container features and open source integration is great. Our organization has what we need to do to run containers with Kubernetes. At this point, we need a longer support lifecycle. 18 months isn't enough. Well, we heard you loud and clear, which is why we enabled five years of container support with Windows Server 2022 and so much more, such as the ability to use group managed service accounts without domain join hosts, run globally scalable applications with virtualized time zones, alignment with industry standard container D, bringing the latest and greatest to Windows containers, enabling consistent network policy implementation across hybrid Kubernetes clusters, IPv6 support for Windows containers, multi-subnet support for Kubernetes worker nodes, and so much more, like container image optimization. Take a look at the Windows Server Core container image size. It's been reduced by a gigabyte while still providing the compatibility you need. To make it easier to modernize existing apps, we've invested in better tooling, such as Windows Admin Center has a container tool with an easy to use and friendly UI and will even create Docker files for you. Admin Center supports containerizing ASP.NET and Web Deploy lets you easily deploy containerized applications to AKS or AKS running on Windows Server 2022 or Azure Stack HCI. Now, many of you are using the Azure migration tools. So we've added an Azure Migrate containerization app to containerize your existing Windows Server apps as part of Azure Migrate. With the Containerize app, it targets the running server, extracts the content to be containerized, uses the Azure Container Registry, and creates a new container to deploy on AKS. And the Containerize app supports ASP.NET and IAS. One of your top requests has been the ability to run Linux containers side by side with Windows containers, which is why we enabled the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL2 on Windows Server 2022. You can now install everything you need to run WSL by entering a simple command of WSL hyphen install as an administrator using PowerShell or the Windows command prompt and restarting your machine. This command will enable the required optional components, download the latest Linux kernel, set WSL2 as your default, and install a Linux distribution for you. Ubuntu is the default. If you need another distro, there are many options you can choose from or install your own. With WSL enabled, you can use the Windows terminal to access Linux distros via WSL or remotely. Or you can even use GPU acceleration for machine learning via WSL. How cool is that? Now, if you're using containers and want to deploy in production, you'll want to deploy on Kubernetes. If you deploy in Azure Kubernetes services, you get a completely managed service in the cloud where Kubernetes lifecycle management is handled for you. If you need AKS on-premises, then we have AKS on Windows Server 2022 and Azure Stack HCI. With AKS on Windows Server, you can rely on easy to use workflows to set up your kube clusters and be ready to host your cloud native apps in less than an hour. Here are a few common scenarios. Number one, new AKS apps. Developers like developing new cloud apps in AKS and Azure, and now they can deploy those same apps on premises without any code change. Number two, modernizing legacy apps. Many of you tell us that you have legacy .NET and Java apps that just work. You don't want to invest in rewriting these apps, but they're running on ancient operating systems. One option is to containerize these apps, which decouples the app from the operating system. Once you've done this, you can deploy the container on Windows Server 2022 and future Windows Server versions, and they will continue to just work. And finally, with AKS on Windows Server, you can deploy Azure Cloud services on-premises, like SQL Managed Instances, Azure Virtual Desktop, App Services, Functions, and more, while running them again on your servers on-premises. Now, we are so optimistic about the growth of AKS on-prem for app modernization that we're making a change for software assurance customers with the new Azure Hybrid benefit for AKS. With this benefit, Software Assurance customers can use AKS on Azure Stack HCI or Windows Server 2019 or 2022 at no additional cost. You can apply this to new 
or existing AKS clusters and use Azure Arc to apply consistent policy and governance. And you're gonna hear a lot more about Azure Arc later. Pretty awesome, huh? Now, let's switch gears and talk Azure innovation for Windows Server, and that starts with Windows Server 2022 Data Center Azure Edition, which includes all the Data Center Edition features and adds additional Azure and Windows Server innovation. Now, speaking of innovation, one Windows Server feature you've told us that you really love is Storage Replica. Storage Replica enables replication of volumes between Windows servers or clusters for disaster recovery and has both synchronous and asynchronous modes. The latter is ideal for long range replication, such as between cities or to your nearest Azure regional data center. In Windows Server 2022 Azure Edition, Storage Replica is getting even better. We're introducing Storage Replica Compression. With the installation of the September 2022 cumulative update, Windows Server Azure Edition now includes compression for asynchronous replication in Storage Replica. This feature leverages SMB compression available in Windows Server 2022, and there are a couple of really big benefits. First, you'll see a drop in network consumption, which will save you money on metered networks over what is usually a congested long haul network. Second, Compression will also lower your recovery point convergence time for many workloads, meaning your data should be protected faster than with usual asynchronous replication performance. In terms of deployment options, Storage Replica supports a variety of deployment scenarios. You can replicate between individual servers. You can replicate between clusters. You can also replicate servers and clusters with Azure for a hybrid solution. For configuration, Storage Replica delivers a couple of new PowerShell commandlets to create and set new Storage Replica groups and partnerships. You can expect that we will deliver an update in Windows Admin Center in the future for a GUI experience. So that's Storage Replica compression. Next, we have hot patching. Hot patching updates in-memory code of running processes. No process restart or reboot is required. Currently requires server core. We'll come back to hot patching in just a moment. Next, we have SMB over Quick. SMB over Quick introduces an alternative to the TCP network transport, providing secure, reliable connectivity to edge file servers over untrusted networks like the internet. SMB over Quick is great for edge devices to safely access a file server and for telecommuters, mobile and hybrid workers with Windows 11. Finally, we have Azure Extended Networking, which is designed to solve the challenge of moving apps to the cloud and need to maintain the same IP addresses. Azure Extended Network enables you to stretch an on-premises subnet into Azure to let on-premises VMs keep their original private IP addresses when migrating to Azure. The network is extended using a bi-directional VXLAN tunnel between two Windows Server 2022 VMs acting as virtual appliances, one running on-prem and the other running Windows Server Azure Edition in Azure, with each appliance also connected to the subnet to be extended. Azure Extended Network provides a path to IP independence. All right, time to come back to hot patching because it's something that everyone wants to see. So let's take a look at Windows Server 2022 Azure Edition hot patching. Hey folks, it's Ned Pyle here again. Uh, today I'm gonna to preview for you one of these upcoming features coming, hot patch for Azure Edition VMs with desktop experience. <clears throat> what is hot patch? Why is this so important? It, when we first released Server 22 with Azure Edition, we supported hot patching VMs running uh, Server Core. We know that not everybody uses Server Core. Uh, so now we're really getting to the meat, the 95% the hot patch for Azure Edition servers running desktop experience. This is going to preview this spring. Uh, Azure Edition VMs with a desktop experience have start menu, the shell, taskbar. Uh, these will no longer reboot every month for security updates and instead only restart a few times a year when they rebaseline using a normal cumulative update that all Windows servers gets. That means that you could miss as many as eight reboots a year uh, for your entire fleet. So I have a little teaser demo here to show this feature off and uh, you'll get a chance to see Azure Edition with desktop experience being hot patched. Okay, so let's start up this demo. On the left-hand side, I have a 22 Azure Edition server. And on the right-hand side, I have a 22 Azure Edition server. And you can see right here, I'm just gonna call it out. In this case, I'm going to 
treat the one on the right like it's regular server 22, something that you can't get hot patches, okay? So you can see I have a desktop experience. You can see there's a GUI and there's a background. You see my recycle bin, all that kind of good stuff. And here on the right-hand side, you can see I have another 22 server. And what I'm going to go through and do is hot patch one and run a regular cumulative patch on the other one. The same thing that you would usually run on regular Windows server, right? Okay. So on the left, I've loaded up a little prompt. You know, you don't have to install hot patches by hand, obviously. You can use uh, Windows Update and Azure Update Service, and all those things. Those will happen normally. This is just for purposes of demonstration. So I'm going to install this cumulative update on the right. And you're very experienced with this. It's going to download a very large file. I've actually sped this up somewhat in order to make this demo not last, you know, for 30 minutes. It'll be very unexciting to watch. And so it's, it's finding the cumulative update. It's uh, installing a bunch of stuff. It's doing a pending update. And it's going to keep running here for some time. As you know, in order to get all this, you know, security goo onto your machine, uh, you know, this December, let's say. So it's still running. It's still running. Okay, it looks like we finally got there to the installing phase. So while that starts up on the, um, the old fashioned way, I'm just going to install the hot patch on the left. Don't blink. Installing and installing, and that's it. Like that's how long it takes. Now I'm hot patched. There's no reboot pending. I don't need to do anything else. I can just keep trucking along. All these things are patched in memory. My applications don't know what's happening. It's all just suddenly safe and no one knows any better. On the right-hand side, I am still installing. Again, I've accelerated this demo so that it doesn't last for 20 or 30 minutes. And it's still going to be a while. Um, just while we're waiting a little bit longer, just keep in mind that you can run Azure Edition um, on the public cloud, you know, regular Azure, but also starting um, just a little while ago, you've been able to start running it in a, in a production way on Azure Stack HCI with 22H2. And its marketplace will actually download you Azure Edition VMs. In fact, that's the only option it has for servers. If you go there and deploy a server, it will be an Azure Edition VM. So, you know, if you got a core server today, you can do hot patch, and if you you know wait until the spring, you can do a hot patch on desktop experience. It'll be terrific. Anyway, my server on the right has finally started to reboot. Now everybody's complaining that nothing works because that server's rebooting. And meanwhile, my Azure Edition server with desktop and hot patch is working fun. And that's it. So thanks for watching. Um, if you're interested in learning more about what's going on with Windows Server, make sure you check out the Windows Server Insider Program. There is also an Azure Edition Insider Program available inside of the Azure Marketplace. Just look for Windows Server Preview. Um, if you want to go and deploy this um, in, a, in a lab or test environment right now, you can go and download Azure Edition ISOs that not even have Azure Stack HCI and just use them from an eval. If you go to the What's New in Windows Server 22 page, and just grab those ISOs, deploy them onto Hyper-V, run, try it out, follow the steps to set up hot patching, and you're good to go. Thanks for your time. Pretty cool, huh? As you just saw, hot patching with Windows Server 22 Azure Edition is powerful. Like AKS on Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI, we are so optimistic about the growth of Azure Stack HCI to enable Windows Server Azure Edition on-prem that we're making a change for software assurance customers with the new Azure Hybrid benefit for Azure Stack HCI. With this benefit, software assurance customers can exchange your Windows Server cores for Azure Stack HCI cores at no additional cost. In addition, the Azure Stack HCI host fee and optional Windows Server subscription fee are waived to reduce TCO. Let me give you a quick example. Suppose you have a three node Azure Stack HCI cluster with a total of 96 cores. The Azure Stack HCI subscription is $10 per core per month or $960 per month. With the Azure hybrid benefit for software assurance customers, that goes from $960 per month to zero. Now with that, my time is up and I have a couple of last recommendations. You can learn more and download Windows Server 2022 evaluation bits. Also, invest in yourself. Folks, we know that hybrid is the durable long-term state for IT. So get certified for the Windows Server Hybrid Administrator Associate. You want this on your resume. 
Finally, be sure to check out the Migration and Modernization Program. We've got a lot more great content to come. Thanks, everyone.